10 Large Business of the Year for the uh, Tampa Virginia Regional Chamber. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Nick Naranjas. Hi, I'm Nick. I've uh, been that way for 70 years, and um, I'm very pleased to be here and to talk with you today. Um, I'm going to have a Q&A afterwards so that we can get to throw some things out on the floor that you might want to hear about. But I want to tell you just a little bit about other than what Phil said. Um, I guess I'm here today because um, I threw out things I didn't want to do in my life as I went forward. If I was doing something and it bothered me or it didn't please me, I'd get rid of it. Uh, thankfully, that didn't include my wife. So. Um, and one night, after we had opened our first restaurant in Richmond, Virginia, um, for McDonald's in 1970, we were losing money every day, every single day. And I came home and I forgot one of my own lessons, one of the one things I'll tell you about in a few minutes. I sat down on the steps that led to the second floor of our house and Kathy sat behind me and she was massaging my neck and I said, honey, we're going broke. I said, every day that we open that door, we're poorer than we were the day before. I sit down, I said, my desk, at uh, my, I wish I had to do very little at my restaurant at McDonald's, and the phone call came in, and it was Don Smith, and I said, Don, thank you for the offer. I said, but I think in the long run, McDonald's is going to step all over Burger King, and I said, I would rather have one McDonald's than 200 plus Burger Kings, and uh, so he said, okay, thanks. And that was the end of that. Uh, so now we have 14. So it took me 41 years. Very simple rules. And pretty much they're inviolate rules. So they happen and they are going to work. And you just don't need to forget them ever. I was once noted for saying at a McDonald's convention when they asked me to give a presentation. When it comes to community service and caring for your, your neighbors and your friends, you can't give enough away. That's a little bit of a simplification. simplification. What I mean by that is, the vernacular is what goes around comes around. If what you're doing ever seems like drudgery, stop. Figure out what's wrong, fix it, and move on. Attack situations, not individuals. Words and phrases to remove from your vocabulary. Don't you ever say any of these anymore. I can't. It'll never work. Leave me alone. That's a dumb idea. One of my absolute favorites. It must be nice. <laughs> I stopped talking in high schools when one of the kids said that to me. I'll get even. Don't use any words that degrade others. I said it earlier. If you say you quit, you lose. Never let success alter who you are. You can tell a phony a mile away. Besides, it's too hard to keep up the act. You gotta be who you are with everybody. Surround yourself with persons who share your vision and are smarter than you. Share your experiences with them. Share the credit. It's incredible how much you can accomplish if you don't give a darn who gets the credit. Don't be proud. Ask for help. None of us is as good as all of us. The quote from Joseph Campbell, we must be willing to give up the life we've planned so as to have the life that is waiting for us. I take that back. I acted on that a long time before when I just walked away from Caterpillar Tractor a week after they promoted me. And uh, it was just, I knew it wasn't me. The potential inside everybody is limitless. All you gotta 
do is believe and take action and be yourself. Philosophy from there, okay? It's great to be in business in Winchester. Winchester appreciates. What we do, our business philosophy into the future, and I can't tell you right now about how this is gonna pan out, but we have three businesses right now that we're negotiating with to add to the city, none of which exist in this town right now. And uh, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. We're planned out till December of 2014 right now. They'll all be open by then. And uh, we're gonna continue to support our community because our community supports us. And I'm going to wrap and go to the Q&A right now, because I've been talking for 25 minutes. Yes, sir. It made a major leap from engineering to food service. Why? <sighs> my family was poor. You hear me say that. I watched my parents struggle to the ultimate to keep my brother in Rensselaer Polytechnic uh, Institute of New York. In 1955, when he went to college, it was over $2,000 a semester to go to That was exceeding my father's income. So I watched the savings go away, I watched the vacations go away, I watched everything go away. Um, I was lucky enough to set a couple of state records in track in New York when I was in high school, one of which still stands. <laughs> I don't know why, with all the drug enhancements you know, that are available. Um, but anyway, I determined that I am not going, I was not going to go to a university where my parents had to pay anything to put me there. I wasn't going. I was going full scholarship or I was going to go get a job. I didn't want to do that to them that I saw that all out of love, they stressed themselves enormously to keep my brother in college. And, uh, you know, I understand. I'm a parent, you're a parent, mostly, and I understand that. Sure, you want your kids to do as well as they can. But seeing it from the other side, I was five years younger than him. Seeing it from the high, high school kid's side, I said, okay, I'm going to go to some place for, well, I set a couple of state records. Naval Academy came down and said, hey, you got some fairly good grades. Would you uh, like to go to the Naval Academy? And they had one butt-kicking track team at the Naval Academy. Well, they could... They couldn't play football very well, but uh, <laughs> man, could they, could they run? Which is a really good asset if you're in the military. You know? um, and I said, okay, fine. And I went there, and uh, dummy me, guess what? No electives. I stood, there were 700 and plus couple in my graduating class out of almost 1,200 that went in. I stood somewhere like 615 in engineering out of that group. And I stood in the top 10 in my class in humanities, languages, arts. There's your handwriting on the wall right there. It wasn't my interest. I did it because I had to do it. I graduated, whoopee. I went out and did my time in the Navy, whoopee. And uh, you know, I got out of the Navy because as I said, it just seemed too big and amorphous for me. And then I got into a large corporation where I one day, one day got yelled at for having a pink shirt on instead of a white one. Um, so I figured, well, corporations aren't the thing either. So I don't think I could even turn a switch on a nuclear power plant anymore. I'm pretty sure I couldn't. Not with public safety in mind. Um, anyway, that's what happened. And uh, food service came up from the standpoint of I want to be by myself. My cousin was the third licensee. He got a McDonald's restaurant in 1956. And it, while I was in college, I graduated. I, I, I came home for leave, and I went to see him. And I walked into his restaurant, and here's a guy that, he, got, he left school at fourth grade in, in Greece. And he came here, and at the time he had something like 31 McDonald's. He was on the beginning of getting 31 McDonald's restaurants. He had just a small area. He had New York State. Right. And uh, I said, you know, if a guy with a fourth grade education in a foreign country can do this, I'll bet you I can. <laughs> that was the food service part. It all sort of fit together. You know, you throw all the pieces into the pot and they, that's what came out. Yes, yes uh, I heard you mention that you went to Clown College. Yes. Franklin. Yes. You went to uh, Shenandoah University. The right. Academy. Right. Did you go to Hamburger U? Yes, I did. <laughs>
you're looking at the salutatorian of class 103. <laughs> yeah, that means I was the second best burger flipper. So, uh, they're up to class 2000 and something right now. Yeah, I went to Hamburger U. I was so early in the system that Mr. Kroc would come in the basement of the McDonald's restaurant that I was held in and teach classes. And uh, Fred Turner, the, he later became the chairman of the board, would teach classes. And each one of them gave me their personal business card and their desk phone number that would get around their secretary. And uh, I remember Ray, we were talking about Ray up here a few minutes ago. Um, Ray was a genius, a business genius. And Fred also, incredibly intelligent people. And uh, Ray was sitting at a bar one night and I was having trouble. I just, went back, the corporation paid for me to go to Las Vegas so I could see the national convention so I could know what's going on. I couldn't afford to go to the National Convention in Las Vegas. And he was sitting in a bar at one of those raised bars, semi-circular in the casino in one of the hotels. And I went walking by, and he was all by himself. And uh, I had imagined then, and I imagine now, that it was because other people didn't want to approach him. You know, they thought, oh my God, it's the chairman of the board. Well, I said, heck, you know, he's a person, I'm going to say hi. So I just trundled on over there, I said, hi, Ray. And he looked at me, and he goes, hello, Nick. <laughs> this guy's got licensees all over the United States. I was restaurant number 1,557, okay? And he goes, you're the fellow from Richmond, Virginia, who's got lousy sales. <laughs> I said up here what he really said, okay? Uh, <laughs> and uh, I was sort of taken aback by that. He would know that one licensee in his system. And he said, but you know, he said, I've been looking at your reports. You're running it real well. And he said, so don't you worry, son. He said, you are going to succeed. He said, I'll see to that. And he did. And, you know, that was 41, I'm 41 years at McDonald's now. I'm one of the 10 longest serving owner operators in the McDonald's system in the world. And we're just getting started. You know, we're just getting started. I'm waiting to see what they give me for my 50th anniversary. They, they gave me an a, a electrically powered massage chair for my 40th. I was just wondering if that's a hint. <laughs> and Shenandoah has given me a Lifetime Achievement Award on Saturday. I wonder if that's a hint. <laughs> I got the opening line for them, though. Those of you from Shenandoah, the opening line is, what do you give me a Lifetime Achievement Award for? I'm just getting started. 